How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're taking a look at this Fluke 183 Tura RMS multimeter. Uh, this is normally a 5,000 count instrument, but with one of the power on options, you can turn it into a 50,000 count instrument. Uh, now these originally were a design by Tektronix, and they released these onto the market as the TX1 and a slightly upmarket model in the TX3. I believe Fluke purchased the design from Tektronix in around about 2000 and they then marketed these alongside the 187 and the 189 instruments that they had developed themselves as a bottom end of that range as the 183 equivalent to the TX1 and the 185 equivalent to the TX3. Um, in terms of the difference between the 183 and the 185 you have slightly better voltage tolerances on the 185, uh, DBM measurement in voltage mode, and they add a temperature measurement functionality that this doesn't have at all. And they also added in a 4 to 20 milliamp mode on the DC current measurement function as well that this doesn't have either. Now, when I worked for a company a while back, I did have a Tektronix TX3 instrument, and I found it to be an ideal instrument for electricians uh, with the single amp current socket that you see there. That covers the whole range all the way from uh, 100 nanoamps to 10 amps and 15 amps for 30 seconds. And it also has a fuse monitoring system in there, so if you blow the internal fuse, you will actually get a warning up on the screen, which is a great functionality when you're dealing with current transformers and you turn your instrument to amps and it will tell you if you've got a damaged fuse in there. So obviously, you don't want to open circuit the secondary of a current transformer. So this instrument itself I purchased from eBay. I would have liked a uh, Fluke 185 or Tektronix TX3, and if I ever see one of those come up on the market, I probably will purchase them, but we'll make do with this one at this moment in time as it gives me some of the functionality that I do like. Now we'll just quickly go through the ranges on here. We have a voltage function there, and the other difference you see, it's a single voltage function, AC, DC, and the AC, DC mode are selected using these soft keys up here. Uh, basic accuracy on AC volts is 0.6% plus two counts, uh, the range from 100 microvolts to 1000 volts. On the DC voltage range, we are 0.07% plus one count, uh, again, 100 microvolts to 1000 volts. In 50,000 mode, that drops to 10 microvolts resolution at the bottom end there. Um, frequency, uh, next one along, that is 0.002% plus one count, and we can measure from 0.5 hertz up to one megahertz. We then have the continuity ohms and diode function there. Uh, the resistance, that's 0.1% plus four counts, and can read from 0 0.01 ohms to 50 mega ohms. Uh, capacitance, next one along, we can measure from one picofarad to 50 millifarads. Uh, we are normally 1% plus three counts, but above 50 microfarads, we are 3% plus three counts. And then finally on this one is the amps function. Again, single function and the soft key select AC, DC, and AC, DC. The only difference is we do default DC on the current, whereas on the voltage we defaulted to AC. Um, AC current is 0.6% plus two counts, and DC current is 0.2% plus four counts. Both of these are 100 nanoamps up to 10 amps. On the 50,000 count function, we are 10 nanoamps. And these will read up to 15 amps for, I think it's 30 seconds, and then you have to have a rest period of about 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. So that's the basic instrument there. Uh, as I said, I bought this from eBay secondhand. It did come in this little robin pouch, which is obviously not original. Although I don't believe Flute did a case with this. I think you had to buy that as an extra uh, when they released this. And then the leads here, these are standard RS leads, fused 500 milliamps. Um, these obviously weren't the original either, but then leads tend to be consumables. Uh, for electricians really. Um, so that's what came with the kit. Originally you would have a set of T75 test leads uh, very similar to these with the crop clips on them. Uh, but as I say they are long gone. Uh, you do get a check probe as well 
uh, when you come back out of AMPS, but as you saw, it's just a message that's displayed on the screen. I haven't actually changed it over yet, which we need to do. So that's that in there. If we just go to continuity, um, you do get, put it a bit closer actually, you do get the open and short on there, but it is very, very fast. Um, the actual reading itself is a lot slower to respond, but that's pretty good for an instrument of the uh, 1990s era. Uh, let's put them onto voltage as well, and we can do some diodes and some LEDs. Uh, let's go for our LED board. Uh, yeah, I've got a reading, and he's lit up. Uh, he is lit up, hard to see. Again, just lit up, but hard to see. And we've got readings. Uh, lit up a little bit better, and again 2.48, so we've got readings on that one as well. Our diodes, uh, which way around was this one? There's our normal diode there, it should be open. We can flip him over. We get our reading there, and then moving down, we've got our zener there. Got a shot key, should be lower. There we go, and the standard rectifier, and finally our amber, which again is just lit, um, and we do get a reading. That's the diode test all completed, uh, with no problems found there. As I went through the actual functions on the meter, you should hopefully have noticed that some pictures came up with this check plus DMM that I made some measurements against both in 5,000 count and 50,000 count modes. I will put that up for you on the screen now, the table of results. Um, you can see I did measurements for the voltage, current, resistance, uh, capacitance, and frequency as well. And there are no problems with any of those readings in either of the modes. They are all quite well within the specification, really, uh, which I'm very happy about. Uh, the only thing to note with those test results is that the capacitance function doesn't have any increased resolution when you're in 50,000. It's only the amps resistance voltage. Uh, and I think the frequency did have an extra digit as well. So not all of it benefits from the actual 50,000 count mode. And the update rate when you're in 50,000 count is also slower as well. Um, so that's those results there. All good, as I said. I'm not actually sure how old the instrument is person that I purchased this from told me that it was their father's and they believe it to be around about 10 years old. Um, you do have a calibration date stored in these. There is an IR port on the top of this instrument so you can link it to software. I did link it up to uh, PuTTY Terminal software and tried to read that date but it's blank. Uh, I'm not sure why. As far as I'm aware, Fluke used to fill that with a date from the manufacturer when they used to run these through the calibration at the end of manufacture. Um, the only way you can change that date or clear it is with the Metcal calibration software and I've got no evidence that this uh, meter has been calibrated since manufacture. There's no labels on it for calibration. There's no remnants of uh, any labels either. So not 100% sure how old it is. So speaking of the actual IR port on the back, that is actually for connection to software. This is the Fluke Forms basic version that I've got running here on the computer and you can buy the adapter from Fluke themselves. You do also do get uh, a little plastic insert to go in this that the adapter can clip onto but that insert isn't present. I think you used to buy it with the software and the adapter and this software and the adapter isn't for this meter, this is for another instrument that I have um, but it does still work. I'll put a screenshot up of the re-measurements that I've made. And this was actually in 5,000 count mode, uh, which is interesting because it looks like on the prime we've got an extra digit there that we don't have on the actual screen. And you will notice with the software that there are 10 readings there. Something I didn't mention between the 183 and the 185 is the 183 has 10 memory slots. The 185 has 30 memory slots. So that's another difference between the two meters there as well. But nonetheless, uh, it's working perfectly well. You just have to hold this and line this up manually uh, instead of using the insert. But we can get it talking without any problems whatsoever. 
So with regard to the actual instrument itself, um, it is a little bit grubby as you can see, but everything is all good. The instrument is in much better condition than the holster as you would kind of expect. Just pop the instrument out. Um, there's the actual instrument there. And the function switch is all fine. Um, there are a few little dings on it. Uh, there's a little one up there. But the screen's pretty good. There's no major scratches on it or anything. So quite happy with that. Battery compartment on these. You do have to take the leads out to get to the batteries. Uh, as you can see there, put it off and there's your batteries. Unfortunately, you do have to open the instrument up to get to the fuse that's stored away internally. Um, so that's not the best, but not much you can do about that. Uh, said so the holster itself is a bit grubby, needs a good clean up, um, but it's fairly good uh, in condition there. Uh, tilt bail is obviously working quite well. Uh, it's a multi position one, so that's its uh, basic position. Then you flip down a little clip at the back and it sits lower for you should you want to. And with this one here as well, you also have this rubberized tong that you can use so you can hang the meter over a door or a frame or something like that and this does move so you can make it a bit more of a sturdy hold as well should you want to um, so that's all well and good so we'll get this cleaned up and we'll see what it looks like when we're done so we've had a little clean up of the instrument as best we can obviously it is second hand there are still some marks and bits of ingrained dirt in there so we can't get everything out but it's much better than it was uh, for the time being, I can put it in the fluke case alongside the 1587 FC there. I'll sit inside there. Um, I need to sort out some leads for it, uh, but I can make do with the existing leads that come with the 1587 at this moment in time. The accessories, I can just about put them in here alongside it, but I could perhaps also put a little bit of shadow foam up there and put these into that or maybe even cut this case out and fill it back in with shadow foam um, alternatively I could do what I did with the HT Italia equipment I have and get a Milwaukee pack out case and put some shadow foam in that and put these in alongside a current probe and all the other accessories that I may need uh, and over time since I've got the calibration manual for this I'll try and set this up and run some more in-depth calibration tests on it accordance with the manufacturer's specs to see how well it fares. Um, but that'll be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.